Our next couple of lessons are going to start applying some of the formulas we learned. And in this one, we're going to apply our slope formula. And the next one, we'll be looking at the midpoint distance formula all combined together with the slope formula. But here, we're going to just start plotting some lines. So our question is, what do you need to know in order to, to graph a unique line? We can all draw a million lines. But if we want to be really specific about it, what kind of things do we need to specify? If you think about it, what if you just plopped a point right on your paper and I said, draw a line through that? What do you think? Would everybody draw the exact same line? Probably not, because there's a lot of different ways we could go as we kind of draw. We could go slope with positive or a negative slope, coming vertical, horizontal, lots of them. But if I were to take two points, we've learned this already. If I gave you two points, then there would be just one line that goes between those. So that's the first option for us. If we're given two points, then we could graph that line and it would be just one single answer. So two points would work. Now, another option is, let's say we just, I gave you the one point, and then I told you what direction I wanted it to go. So I, I told you I wanted it to be positive slope. And then I went on and I specified just what that slope was, how steep I wanted it to be. So in that case, you would have like a rise and a run number specified to you. And if I told you exactly how to rise and how to run, then we would not get two different lines. Everybody would get the same line. So the other option is if you only have one point, then you better have some indication of what slope you want it to run at. And we're going to look at both of these in this lesson. First, let's start with our two points option. If you're given two points, this is pretty straightforward. You plot the two points, and then you draw the line between them. So let's run through that, and I hope you have a straight edge with you, because I do want you to be precise here. All right, so in our first example, we're given point A at negative 7, 3. Let's go ahead and put that on our graph. Come back to negative 7, and then go to 3 on your Y value. Call that point A. Be sure you're labeling very specifically what your points are. Next point we're given is point B at 1, 4. So I'm going to come up 1 and move up to 4 here and call this point B. These are two points that are on the line that I want you to draw. So that's enough to just go ahead and connect those with a straight edge. You don't want to just start and stop at A and B, but another, you want to go all the way through there. So there's your line AB. Not too bad. I think everybody can do that. Our next one, we have to graph a line named C with an x-intercept of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So let's review what that means. An x-intercept is when you have a line that crosses the x-axis, the point where it crosses is called your x-intercept. And of course, your y-intercept, that line will probably also cross the y-axis. So wherever it crosses the y-axis is your y-intercept. People sometimes don't realize it, but when it gives you two intercepts, it's giving you two points. So it fits under this category. So all we got to do is just go to the x-axis and find where the x-value is 2 and plot that. We don't have a name for this one. Go to the y-axis at negative 3 and plot that. So on the y-axis, I'm going to come here. These are my two points that are going to determine my line. And I'll just draw the line through them. Let me change a color here. So there we go. There's my line. And it had a name. It was called line C. I would like you to write that line C. Let's just put it right here. Line C. Hopefully you can see that. All right, now our last one is a try this for you. So your job is to pause the video right now and do graph the graph of line P on your own. Make sure that it passes through the point at 9, negative 7 and has a y-intercept of negative 7. Pause it, come back, and check. I'll have it for you when you get back. And we're back. All right, here it is in red. We've got line P. Did you notice it was a horizontal line when you drew it? Just It didn't rise or run. It's got uh, the point here at 9, negative 7. I hope you got that in the right spot. And that your y-intercept is there at negative 7. And that you have labeled it. Did you write your label, line P? If you did not, be sure you add that in there so that everything is distinguishable. Now, we do step up the degree of difficulty a little bit when we're given the point and the slope. Not too bad. I think it was something we can handle. But if you're given the point and the slope, you want to do these things. You always, that's an always, start by plotting the point. You aren't going to be get anywhere if you don't start with the point. That's the first thing. And then once you've started the point, beginning from there, you're going to use the rise and the run of the slope to find another point. All 
All right, so let's see how that works out. Here's our first example. We're going to graph the line that runs through the point 4, 6 with a slope of negative 2 fifths. My first step is to start by plotting the point. So let's go to 4, 6 and get that plotted. And then I go from there with my rise and the run. Now let's look at what the rise and the run are. The rise is from the y's. It's here on the top. So I'm going to rise negative 2. I'm going to run from the numerator, the denominator, I'm going to run 5. Okay, but I do it from this point. So here I go. I'm going to rise negative 2. That requires me to drop down 2 units. And then on the run to the right, I'm going to move across here 5 units. So there's my drop of 2 and my run across of positive 5. And that locates a second point for me. And once I have that second point, I've got my line. So I'll draw my line through those two points. And that is all there is to that. Looks pretty good. Okay, now let's look at this next one. We're going to graph the line that passes through point A. We've already got it plotted here at 3, negative 8. And our job is to make sure it runs parallel to PT. What does that have to do with anything? Well, from our last lesson, you might remember that parallel lines have what? Equal slopes. So I need to figure out the slope of my line PT, and I need to copy it on my new line. Let's go ahead and do that right now. The slope for PT is looks like I'm going to do a rise, and I'm going to do a run. Build that right triangle. Let's count that out. Rise goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's positive 8. And on the run, it's just 1, 2. And that's also positive. So rise and run is 8 over 2. 8 over 2. That does reduce. That goes down to the same thing. If I divide everything by 2, 8 divided by 2 brings that down to 4. And 2 divided by 2 brings that down to 1. So I could just do a slope of 4 over, over 1. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise 4, and I'm going to run 1. Where do I begin, though? Remember, your first start step is to start with the point. And our point was a is negative 3, 8. So I'm going to start here at point a, and then I'm going to use my slope, rising 4 and running 1, to plot this. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and... Oh, let me switch this. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 on the rise and over just one unit on the run. And that brings me to this second point. Now some of you are probably thinking, why did we have to reduce it? I like to reduce it because it definitely shortens the number of my count. But could you have used the 8 and the 2? Yeah, you could. you get the same answer. If you had gone instead 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then over 2, 1, 2. You're going to be at a different point. You're going to be right here. But is that point collinear with the others? And you'll see when we draw our line, it is. It's just going to give you the same line, regardless of if you reduced or not. All right, so there we have it. Those lines are parallel. And let's mark that they are by drawing the arrows symbolizing parallel lines on this picture. All right, next example, we are going to do a perpendicular one. And I'm going to zoom in on this one. Okay, we're going to graph the line passing through the point 4, 2, 4, negative 2, that is, and perpendicular to JR. So like our last example, we have to figure out what's the slope of JR. Let's count from J to R, go and drop that, come across. Let's count that right triangle sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm getting a drop of 6. And on the run, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 to the right. All right, so putting rise over run. The 6 here, negative 6 is the rise. And run is 4. Can we reduce that and make our lives a little bit easier if we divide by 2? That's the same thing as negative 3 over uh, dividing by 2 here, negative over 2. So I'm going to use that as a simpler form. Okay, now here's the thing. These, this one's perpendicular. So what do I do? I have to fix that slope before I do anything else. I need to change that slope. So I'm going to do two things. You remember I'm going to do change the sign and cross the line. So if I'm changing the sign right now, it's negative. My new sign is going to be positive. And then crossing the line or taking the reciprocal, that's going to put the 2 up and the 3 down. Okay, so this is the slope of my perpendicular line. That's what I want to use when I draw my graph. Let's go ahead now and graph it. 
starting with k as my point. And did they get in the right spot? It's 4, negative 2. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, starting with k here, my rise number again, my rise number is 2. So coming up 2. And my run number is 3. Come across 3, 2, and 3. Here's my new point right there. Okay, so let me go ahead and draw this line in. Line those up. There we go. There's my new line. And it should be perpendicular to JR. Let's just take a little corner of a piece of paper and see if it is. That looks really good. See that right angle right there? Now let's mark that right angle in our picture also so we can remember that we built a perpendicular line set. Excellent. All right, you have one try this question, and definitely we'll be practicing in class. So give that a shot and have a good night.